approximately 104 feet long. Um, it's about 20 to 30 feet above the water line. When the water is higher, it's actually closer to 8 feet. But this um, bridge, it was paramount to the sheep finding a way along um, around all the hay fields and agriculture. And it kept them um, basically on the west side of Haley and up in the hills instead of down in the valley where all the farm and the agriculture was occurring. We've been crossing the Swinging Bridge for about uh, 18 years. Uh, the first year we had to cross the bridge, I come and looked at it two or three times, trying to figure out a way to get around the bridge because it's a little scary. But after two or three years, yeah, it gets easier and easier every year. We start uh, the first of April on. Uh, Wild Horse Desert, which is approximately 100 miles from this point, which is roughly 60, 80 days ago, we traveled over 100 miles. Today, we've come probably 10 miles to get to the bridge. We try to run 900 ewes, 9 to 1,000 ewes with their lambs, you know, 12, 1,300 lambs. So. 500 head with the lambs. Well, the sheep are licensed, and, and so when we license them, they're licensed for so many head, just like herd cattle is licensed for so many head. And so I just do random counts to make sure that they're within the number that they say on their license. I have been uh, at this bridge when sheep have come across and counted them for 41 years now this, this year. Basically, it, it does look a lot the same as it did. Naturally, it's had some cosmetic changes, or I mean some planks that have had been replaced, uh, uh, but the cables are the same. You know, the structure's the same as far as the uh, way it's built. Uh, it's been the same as long as I've been around here. Just, just had to do some maintenance on it over the years. I think, you know, some of the changes that I've seen over the years is, is probably uh, implementation of more and more grazing systems. You know, what's good is, is we uh, work toward, you know, our rangeland health goals. Uh, we implement rest rotation grazing and, and so it's part of my, my job to make sure that we're a pasture scheduled for rest that is rested. And if we have to trail a band of sheep across it, we can do that. But uh, we have certain uh, restrictions on these rest pastures. It's under a deferred system. You can graze it at certain times of the year. So probably one of the changes has been the impl implementation of more, more of our uh, uh, allotments, uh, grazing management systems. Certainly, there's been an increase in public use of public lands over the years. So the increased use of recreation, uh, it's multiple use, and, and so I've certainly seen a lot of change in the, the recreation interacting with our livestock grazing that's going on. So I'd say those are probably the two major changes. Uh, when I first started, I had a bag phone. Today, all my herders have phones, which is not all bad sometimes. You gotta stay with the sheep a lot every every day, every night. You got every day you, we're moving, and you gotta stay with the sheep. I'd sleep on the ground in the pickup. Now we got a motor home, so that's changed. Made it easier. I love this. I love helping the helping the permittees get from one area to another. I love how um, everything's connected, and they're moving for out of the you know, the wild horse desert through the Timberman Hills allotment and now they're going up into the big wood, you know, the, the Wood River Valley on to, this sheep band will go on to Galena Summit. So I, I love that it's connected like that and, and I, have my, I have my tiny little part in it. I think, you know, probably one of the favorite things that I, that I like about working with the permittees is their appreciation and my appreciation for animals. Be that domestic livestock or be that wild life. Over the years, most livestock permittees are good livestock, and that's why they're still in the business. And with that comes hand in hand being good stewards of the land, because they recognize that you've got to have good rangeland conditions 
to feed their livestock. And so I think that, uh, you know, that appreciation for livestock and they wanting to have good range management practices and us having, particularly me, also having the same goals, good range management practices so that you always have that. You know, this is, this is a life, uh, lifelong dream. I love it. Sheep are, the sheep are unbelievable animals. Uh, the wife and I have had really amazing, good time, amazing, met a lot of good people, seen a lot of new country, raised four really good kids. Uh, what an amazing life the sheep business is.